Okay, this is a story about a woman named B. Now, B was an elderly Jewish woman who was a neighbor in a um, trailer park of a missionary that I was in Bible study with. She and her husband lived in this beautiful, um, like assisted living, but trailer uh, park. It had fountains and lakes, it was beautiful. And one day after one of the Bible studies, she told me about a Jewish neighbor she had who was very open to hearing about religious things. And she had been sharing with her bits and pieces about Yeshua, the Messiah. And she said, Rebecca, she's open, um, but I'm not quite sure how to talk to a Jewish person about the Messiah. Is there any books or anything you could recommend that she could be given to read? Because she loves to read. She's just a ferocious reader and reads a book a day practically because she's elderly and there's nothing else to do. I think she was in her like mid 90s, early 90s. So um, I gave her a book that I knew that said uh, Christianity is Jewish and uh, she read it like in a day and she wanted more. So um, I gave her another book and I gave her, uh, you bring the gospels, I'll bring the bagels, uh, just all kinds of books that I had. Well, after reading several books, um, she had a million questions and she wanted to know why this and why didn't the rabbis and if he is the Messiah, then why? And because I'd sort of lived in that world um, studying under various rabbis and messianic leaders, she said, why don't you come over and have coffee and meet uh, B? And I said, I would love that. So one afternoon I came over and I had coffee with her and um, Cindy. So uh, it was a lovely visit. Uh, the woman had a million questions, which I tried to answer the best I could. Well, after several more weeks, I got a call from Cindy and Cindy said, my neighbor B is right there, Rebecca. She just needs a little push over the edge when it comes to understanding um, what it means to be born again. And is there anything Jewish that you could explain to her that she would relate to? And I said, oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Do you know what being born again is in the Jewish culture? And she says, no. And I said, oh, I have to come and share. So she invited me over. Now, in the Jewish community, the whole born again phrase has to do with the new moon. It's called Rosh Kodesh. The new moon means when the moon is in darkness for three days and then comes out of the darkness and shows that first little crescent moon, it's called the born again moon. Why? Because a moon has no light of its own. It's only when it's in the right relationship to the sun, S-U-N, that it begins to take on light. And Jesus, when he said this in his Jewish culture, they knew what the born again moon was. And when Jesus said to Nicodemus, the head of all the Pharisees, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? And Jesus said, you must be born again. You have no light of your own. You have religious activity, but you don't have the Holy Spirit. And that's what he meant when you're born again. You're given the light, the revelation by the Holy Spirit. And your eyes are open and the veil of darkness is removed. So she invited me over. And this time she said, this time I'm going to just tell B that you'll go to her house and I'll let the two of you just talk. I said, fantastic. So off I went. I had people praying for me that morning. So knock, knock, knock. I went to B's door and she was so excited to have me over. She was all dressed up with her hair all fixed and her beads and her matching earrings and she was just adorable. So I came and I said, sit down, sit down. Oh, now 
tell me what it means when Jesus said, you must be born again. I don't quite understand that. So off we went and I explained it all to her. She said, oh, I understand. She says, I want that. I said, you do? She says, yes, I'm convinced that Jesus is the Messiah. And what must I do to be saved? I couldn't believe what I was actually witnessing and hearing. I thought, oh my goodness, Lord, this is such an honor to share this with this woman. So I explained that it would, it would just mean a, a simple prayer and that it would be like the faith of Abraham when he believed God and it would be credited to Abraham as righteousness. And I told B, I said, and so when you believe by faith that Jesus was the Messiah and died on that tr tree for you, and you believe that and receive it as a gift of salvation, then you'll be born again from above. For the scripture says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for it is by grace that you have been saved by faith. And this, not of yourself, it is the gift of God, lest any man boast. So it wasn't in our own good deeds, I told B. It was because she believed in the righteousness that would be credited to her through the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. She prayed the sinner's prayer with me and was so delighted to know that she was born again. Well, little did I know that her grandchildren were Messianic Jews and lived up in Los Angeles. She said, I can't wait to call them. So I hugged her. I said, oh my gosh, this is amazing. They're going to be so thrilled to know. So I went back home. Well, the phone rang a few days later, and she said, my grandson, his wife, and her five children are all coming down from Los Angeles, and I was wondering if you would baptize me with them, and I said, you want me to baptize you? And I thought, oh my goodness, I've never baptized anybody, but oh, absolutely, so that Saturday on Shabbat, they all came down from Los Angeles. And because she was elderly and she couldn't be submerged anywhere, um, they said, just baptize her with oil. And I had holy oil from Jerusalem. So I brought my oil and they all surrounded her. And she was all dressed up. She had white pants on and her hair was so lovely. And they all just tears as I knelt and baptized her in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. He came for the lost sheep. And after we baptized her, it was so precious. The grandson came up to me and hugged me and said, I have been praying for my grandmother to know Yeshua for years. And I'm so grateful that God sent somebody to her before she died so that we can all be together in glory. I said, oh my goodness, that's one of those days where you say, okay, now I can die, Lord. So now you know the story of me to me.